I've always tried to add things to my eBay business, whether it's new inventory, new processes, more equipment, but over the past year or so, I've come to realize that it's actually the things that I've quit doing that has improved my eBay business the most. So in today's video, I wanted to go through 11 things that I've quit doing that's helped me simplify my eBay business. I think the day that you officially become an eBay seller is when you shift your mindset from sourcing to selling. A lot of us don't get to that point because we just love going out and finding items in the thrift. I personally used to go out Monday to Friday, five days a week, pretty much every day that I was working on eBay, I was out sourcing for eBay stock. And I quickly changed that mindset to focusing on eBay itself. I would sit down at the computer in the morning. I would look through the customer service questions that have come in. I would do some store maintenance as well, maybe send off some best offers. And then I'd go ahead and maybe tweak some titles, adjust some price points uh, to hopefully get the store moving algorithmically for me uh, to generate more sales. I would then sit down and I would list up any new items uh, that I'd sourced on the days prior. And I would also go ahead and do the shipping to fulfill all of the orders from the customers that we had uh, from the day before. So all of that work is done before I've even thought about going out to the thrift store. No more 9am stores open, let's get out there. So I'm really trying to condense my thrifting into just a couple of days a week and I'm trying to buy bulk wherever possible. One, it saves time. You're not having to drive around to all these thrift stores. Uh, but two, you're saving quite a lot of money because you're buying in bulk and that drops the price down as well. So. If you can, I know it's tough because we all love our thrifting, but try and condense it and focus on the eBay stuff, the more important stuff that's actually gonna make you the money first. Now this next one's a little bit embarrassing to admit, but I would take all of my unfulfilled orders to the post office and I would transact my payments for it there. I would then get a receipt of payment and I would take all of the tracking numbers to the car and I would type in manually the tracking numbers for all of my buyers so they knew that I'd sent out the orders on time. Um, just a really inefficient way of going about it until I realized there was an Australia Post, My Post business set up, completely integrated as well. So there was no issues, a very simple process. I could do it from home. I could make my payments from home. And then from there, I just had to take the orders to the post office and just drop them off. Nowadays, I'm going out to the back door at the post office. I'm not even lining up in store and I'm handing it over and getting out of there within two minutes. So I'm saving so much more time doing it here at home. I'm saving so much more money because I'm on a band five level discount as well. So if you're brand new to selling and you get this one done and ticked off before 18 months in, you're gonna be well ahead of me because it took me a very, very long time to work it out. And further to that, sticking on postage, I would actually go and buy the, uh, the postage boxes from Australia Post as well. They would charge me $1.50 to $2 odd to buy these boxes to have my items sent out. And I had no understanding that they couldn't be in the Australia Post box. I didn't know you could go to a local timber and hardware store like Bunnings Warehouse and take boxes away for free and save additional money there. Uh, your local liquor stores, your shopping centers, all of these places have got free boxes that you can utilize. Uh, and I've started to do that over the last, well, number of years now. It didn't take me long to realize it, but once I'd quit doing it, it saved me a lot of money not buying those boxes from the post office. And I think postage for me is probably my second biggest cost uh, outside of obviously sourcing stock to sell. Um, so you wanna limit your costs wherever you possibly can from a postage sense. And that one, if you're doing it, is gonna be a big money saver. Now, I would say that this one has potentially simplified my eBay business the most. This is a shift in mindset from a listing habit from units per day to dollar value per day. I would forever list up 10 units, 10 items of stock into my store every day. It needed to be 70 items a week. That was all I was thinking about. And then I started to have a bit more of a think about it from eBay's point of view. They are a business themselves after all, and they wanna make sure that the, the guys that are doing the best on the platform are gonna to continue to be rewarded. Now, I thought, well, how am I gonna give them their best results? I would think it would be more about the dollar value that I put into eBay every day, more so than the units sold. 15% is 15% no matter what, whether it's coming from 100 listings sold or one listing sold. So I shifted my mindset from 10 a day to $500 in value per day. If you think about it, $20 worth of an average sale price for the 10 a day, that might work out to $200 in sales. eBay gets about $30 worth of a cut out of that. Yet I could sit over here and list up two items worth 250 bucks a piece, and eBay would make $70 out of those transactions. So a whole lot more efficient for me to list up two items at 250 bucks each, as opposed to slaving away on these 10 units of stock to try and sell them off for 200 bucks worth of sales. I don't make as much money doing that and I'm having to work a whole lot harder 
to do that as well. So the new goal for 2024 for me so far has been to list up 500 bucks by any means possible. Um, make sure that you're listing that dollar amount. If it's one listing, if it's four listings, it could be 10 listings worth $50 a piece. But ultimately over the course of this year, I've listed a whole lot less in stock and my revenue is exactly the same. So that has made me so much more simplified, so much more efficient. And I really do think that might be a little bit of a secret behind efficiencies on eBay. Now, one thing from day dot that I have been exceptional at is eliminating death piles. I've never really had a death pile. And I, I say that to beginners more so than I'd say that to any uh, experienced full-time sellers because when you're first starting out, it is a very, very bad habit to get into to go out and do what I said right at the very beginning, source and thrift every single day and then go and put your stock in a corner and never get back to it. Completely neglect it, you lose interest in the product and then therefore you're never gonna get around to listing it again. You're gonna continue to source and source and source and this is gonna get so overwhelming that you choose to quit before you've seen any success on the platform. You'll hear people on the internet talk around the fact that you do need a death pile. These people are experienced sellers at a full-time level and they need that supply of stock for a bad day. If they don't get the stock supply coming in, they need to have some stock on hand that they can attend to. But we're not talking about that. I know that the majority of you guys that are watching are just first starting out. You're beginner sellers and you're learning the ropes. Please don't develop a death pile. Work on the inventory that you've got sitting at home, get that stock listed, and then give yourself the reward to go out and thrift again. I created what I call just annoying little piles of stock that I would put to the side because I just didn't want to list it. Over time, I've quit sourcing that because there's clearly a barrier for me to get through the listing process for some reason to do with that item. There's a reason for it because it's still sitting there. I don't want to get to it for whatever reason it is. Um, so I've stopped buying those items moving forward and I never in four years have ever had a death pile. It's never halted my progress as an eBay seller. I've always given myself the reward to go thrifting again once the stock's been listed. And often at times we'll get these big bulk large allotments of stock coming in from viewers of the channel buying out eBay stores and I know that I won't be thrifting for the next two to three weeks until we work through that inventory. Um, so that's a huge step guys, please just stop doing your death piles. It's absolutely killing your eBay business. In my opinion, there are only three factors when it comes to selling an item on eBay. An attractive price point, some great photos, and an SEO based title, a search engine optimized title. I didn't know that until I sat down with the guys at eBay and they spoke so heavily around how important titles were for your listings uh, that I started to put more time and attention into my own. Now, one thing that I quit doing was just using the sell similar process of taking somebody else's listing, copying it, and then submitting your own photos and calling it your brand new listing for yourself. I still do the sell similar, but when I see their title, I manipulate the title into my SEO based title. I think like a buyer, what would a buyer want to search for to find this item that I'm trying to list up? So I front end the most important keyword information at the beginning of the title to stand myself the best chance of being found. So that's one additional step that I'll do on top of the sell similar. I definitely think there is still a, a, a place for sell similar from an efficiency point of view. You can save a lot of time going about that process but photos title and price are the three most important aspects so you really do need to amend that title every time you create a listing now i used to say to myself just because it's cheap i should go ahead and buy it and now the new slogan that i've got for myself is just because it's cheap doesn't mean that you should buy it i think a really large part of what i'm doing now with my sourcing is actually work on just trying to buy the cream of the crop the top top uh, top tier stuff um, so that is ultimately, at the end of the day, a higher average sale price item. Obviously, sell-through rate, such a large important focus when you're out there sourcing and doing your research to find an item worth going ahead and listing up to make profit on. But with Australia Post increasing their price points this year, I've now placed a really large focus around the metric of ASP, average sale price, and I'm trying to make that at least $40 plus. I used to sell a bunch of DVDs in here for $10 to $15 each because I was only buying them for $0.10 to $0.20 cents each. Um, but at the end of the day, with all of these costs associated, I wasn't actually making too much money for myself per the transaction. So with this new mindset of listing dollar values into eBay, like we touched on before from a listing habit perspective, I'm also trying to source higher average sale price stock. So one, I can make more profit on every single sale that I make, but two, I can get to $500 quicker and I don't have to list up as much stock, ultimately being much more simplified and much more efficient. So higher average sale price, just because it's cheap, doesn't mean you should buy it. 
Equally as embarrassing as me taking my orders to the post office, I was growing my eBay business without a SKU system. A SKU system is basically the little number and code that you see on the tubs here behind me. It's an awareness number to let me know where the item is when it goes on to sell. But for years, I operated without a SKU system and it actually wasn't until Courtney jumped on board a year and a half ago that I gave her the task of creating a SKU system for me. Because for two and a half years, I would be traipsing around the house, traipsing around this garage to try and open up all the different tubs I could to find the item that had sold. I'm talking hours per day wasted on searching for stock that had sold. It was, it was tearing my hair out. And I almost felt like I didn't have enough time to get back to creating a SKU system. And, and that's why I waited until Courtney started to create one for me. And now, talk about simplified efficiencies. We are grabbing an item, I can tell you right now, every item that's in that tub, based on the fact that it's in my SKU when an item goes on to sell. Um, the other things that I'm also starting to put into my SKU as well is I'm putting the date that I purchased the item and I'm also putting in the price that I purchased the item in store for. Uh, so I've got all this collated information right there in front of me when an offer comes in, I can search, oh well, how long has it been in store and what did I buy it for based on the offer that I'm seeing it at. Uh, and then when it does go on to sell because I accept maybe the best offer that comes through, uh, I know where I'm gonna find it and I can go ahead and just grab it straight away. So please create a SKU system from day one, even if you've only got one tub, just put a little number or a little letter on it and then put that into the SKU system on your eBay profile uh, and you'll save yourself so many headaches, years worth of headaches, years worth of wasted time uh, that I had to put up with. I've made some videos on this topic as well. This is actually around neglecting store maintenance. I, for a very, very long time when I first started, thought that once you listed up your item, it was just there for eternity and if it would hopefully, if you did the right thing, um, go on to sell. Um, that's obviously not the case because you've got to be manipulating your store on a daily basis. There's that store maintenance that I spoke of right at the beginning of the video that I would do in the mornings. Uh, it might be sending off best offers, doing the end uh, sell similar uh, process to create a brand new listing or make it at least look like a brand new listing for my eBay store. Uh, I would go down the list of my watches and I would reduce the price ever so slightly so they get alerted uh, that there's been a price drop and hopefully I can pick up an extra sale there. Um, I'll change titles, I'll look at my photos, I'll attend to customer service questions. All of this I blanket under the bracket of store maintenance. And if you're not doing that, eBay after about six to 12 months, I'm not exactly sure on the time frame. but if, if a listing has literally just gone around the sun 30 days, 30 days, 30 days for a really long length of time, they'll actually just sweep your store and they'll remove without telling you uh, the listings that have been left dormant and unsold for any length of time. I'm not, like I said, I'm not exactly sure on the length. Um, but you've got to be aware of that and you've got to be maintaining that maintenance of store every single day to generate additional sales because it actually does help you generate sales. Um, so you've got to put that into your, your process as an eBay seller and I'd be doing it at least once a day. Now I'm probably talking more to the slightly more experienced seller here, but I'm not actually relying on eBay for 100% of my income anymore. It's not the focus. I'm, I'm looking at eBay as a great way to make money. It's still a large chunk of the pie on the money that I make, but has made myself so much more stress-free uh, by having alternative income sources as an eBay seller. If you can make money in any other way, whether it is working a part-time job, a full-time job, and having eBay as a side hustle, I think you're ultimately gonna enjoy eBay a whole lot more as a result of it. Stressing over the finances and the taxes and all of the different implications, GST, when you come to it uh, as an eBay seller, it actually doesn't mean that you're making as much as you think you are. The profit margins are a whole lot smaller in business associated to comparison of a paycheck when you're working a nine to five job. You've got to work so much harder to earn your dollar. And I think subsidizing it with alternative streams of income has certainly been a big focus for me over the last couple of years. So I've obviously got this YouTube channel. It's working really well. We're obviously able to help a lot of people on the channel. Uh, but in turn, I also make money through AdSense revenue when you see the ads pop up. That's an alternative source of income for me that alleviates the stress of the dollar that I'm making on eBay. I'm also doing one hour mentoring session phone calls. So you can jump on a video call with me and for $50 an hour, we can sit there and work on every single thing that you need help with, uh, with regards to your eBay business. I'm absolutely loving the process of doing that uh, and I'm trying to book in as many people as I possibly can. So link in the description below. Let's have a conversation. But these alternative sourcing methods have really made my process of selling on eBay a whole lot more stress-free because I'm not relying 100% on the income. I think eBay is a side hustle job. I personally don't have any intention of doing it on a full-time basis. I'm really enjoying the split 50-50 of YouTube, eBay, and then a few mentoring sessions on the side. 
side. Uh, and I think I'm gonna continue it that way moving forward. 10% of my sales, 10% of my revenue comes from international postage. So that's worth about $13,000 a year in sales because I have international postage turned on. That was a huge fear that I quit having fear about uh, a couple of years back. When I first started, it probably took me about nine to 12 months to turn on international shipping. And by turning it on, I literally just went down to the post office and had a conversation with the guys behind the counter. And I said to them, look, I wanna start selling my goods internationally on eBay. What are the price points that I need to be aware of? And they taught me through the zone one to zone five. Uh, and I was able to get my bearings around the weight of the item and how much it would cost depending on where it went. Um, by doing that and just putting in the initiative to learn a new thing about my eBay business has generated 10% more sales for my eBay business. So if you're looking to try and generate more additional sales for your own store, I would highly recommend that you turn on the international shipping if you haven't done so yet already. There are millions, literally millions of buyers out there all around the world that want the items that you've got in store and you're the only one that's holding yourself back by not sitting there and learning the process of international shipping. So I highly recommend that if you do anything out of this video, Video. It's to turn it on, learn the process, and start selling internationally. I think we ultimately overcomplicate things as eBay sellers. There are so many ways that we can streamline our processes as an eBay seller, and hopefully a couple of those that I've touched on today have been able to resonate with you and you can implement them into your own store. I'm gonna leave you with a thrifty video right here, guys. Thank you very much for spending a few minutes with me today. I look forward to putting out the next video, but I'll see you over there for that one.